You're watching ABC 7 News at 7. Whether you like it or not, and it may not be politically correct, but we have a world to run. And in the G7, which used to be the G8, they threw Russia out. They should let Russia come back in. Despite an ongoing investigation on Russia meddling in the 2016 presidential election, President Trump suggests bringing Russia back into the G7 summit. But starts with a trade war with our closest friends. Also this week, pardons attacking the NFL. Where do we begin? Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Cohen, and welcome to ABC 7 at 7. We'll have more on the week in Washington in a moment. But first, our top seven stories at seven. And we begin tonight with the loss of one of the most recognized chefs and television personalities in the world. Anthony Bourdain is dead at age 61. He took his own life while on location in France, leaving behind a girlfriend and an 11 year old daughter. Here at ABC 7, we think it's appropriate to remind viewers that many resources are out there on the Sun Coast to help people who may be having suicidal thoughts, whether it is a suicide hotline or a counselor or a psychiatrist, warning signs a loved one may be depressed, including moving away from their daily routine, not going to work, or a change in appetite. A Bradenton woman who suffered from suicidal thoughts in the past as joining local support groups helps save her life. She also urges people not to keep depressed or suicidal thoughts to themselves. You have to think, well, am I more worried about stigma or losing my life, you know? And you have to think, well, you know, I want to live. So you have to get over that. The number for the National Suicide Prevention Hotline is 1-800-273-8255. We have that number and many other resources on our website at mysuncoast.com. We'll also have much more on Anthony Bourdain and his legacy in our primetime headlines. A manatee man is being sentenced to life in prison for sexual battery and kidnapping. In 2017, Brandon Williams showed up at his ex-girlfriend's workplace where he beat her and another woman before sexually battering them. Officials say Williams took both victims' phones to prevent them from calling for help. Williams was found guilty Thursday of sexual battery, kidnapping, robbery, and, uh, and battery. A 49-year-old man is being charged with possession of child pornography. The sheriff's office got a warrant to search the home of Dave Holland and allegedly found 40 images of child porn. Holland is currently being held at the Sarasota County Jail without bond. An active shooter drill has led Manatee County Schools to reevaluate its school safety plans for the upcoming year. Today, Sheriff Rick Wells and Manatee County School Board Chair Scott Hopes sat down to lay out a plan because of a time crunch. The original plan for armed guardians will continue for elementary schools this coming year. The sheriff will spend the school year hiring enough school resource deputies to be in every school for the 2019-2020 school year. Is that we're not <coughs> allowing any political red tape and all the issues that come up when you're talking about funding to, to interrupt what we wanted to do from the very beginning, and that is to put trained deputies in our elementary schools. That's what we're gonna do. Funding will still be needed to be worked out for the district and the county commission. Today, the two entities focus on what is best for the students and putting funding aside. The commission investigating the Parkland school massacre meeting again today to discuss school safety. Two sheriffs on the commission say it is unrealistic to believe there will be armed officers or guards assigned to all state schools this fall. The Polk County Sheriff says he doesn't have enough qualified applicants for the 100 additional deputies he needs to hire. The Pinellas County Sheriff says school districts are struggling to pay their share. The commission will report its finding on what led to the attack to the governor, Rick Scott, by January 1st. A judge will decide if part of the alleged Parkland school shooter's confession will be made public. Attorneys for Nicholas Cruz asked the judge today to stop the release of a statement from their client's recorded confession. Cruz gave the confession to a detective after he was arrested for the shooting deaths of 17 people at the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Prosecutors say portions of the statement could be made public Monday, but Cruz's attorneys argue the statement will impede their client's right to a fair and impartial trial. The judge says, said that she would read the 200-page transcript and watch the 12-hour-long confession video before making a decision.
Authorities have been searching all day in a pond for a woman who reportedly was dragged into the water by an alligator in Davie. That's in Broward County. A couple of hours ago, an arm was found inside a gator caught in the Silver Lakes Rotary Nature Park. The arm may belong to a woman who is said to have been walking her dogs near the water. One of the dogs was also bit by the gator. Now let's head over to ABC 7's Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan with the first alert forecast. Bob. Scary situation there. Scary as well, Alan. Uh, we are looking at uh, some nice weather out on the waters. You see this cloud bank. This is at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Watch it approach. And then as it approaches uh, west central Florida, it was rather ominous looking out there in the Gulf and then faded away, especially as it headed southward uh, and, and to Englewood and Northport. But uh, for the most part, things are looking really quite calm out there. A nice sunset expected tonight. Weather should be uh, very cooperative uh, for any outdoor events. Uh, and the low pressure area continues to spin here. It's a cutoff low, so it's not moving much. It's just kind of hanging out right there. You can see that line. That was the line approaching, then it kind of fell apart. We did bring uh, some shower activity to Lido, but again, this is a uh, military exercise is going on. Chaff, as we call it. It's not rainfall, but uh, it looks like rain. It's not. It looks like uh, we'll see limited chances for showers uh, through this evening. Last night, we had a pretty big line move through right around 10 o'clock, but uh, it doesn't appear that's going to be a repeat performance tonight. This is an outflow boundary, which is kind of hung up right along I-75. There's a slight chance for an evening shower, but not much at all. The heavy weather that had been around in just central Florida now, well along the east coast, and you can see some showers along the east coast from Titusville uh, southward down to Melbourne there. That activity uh, rather strong and rather significant there, and it looks as though we'll see Pretty calm conditions. We're going to have an update, too, on the GFS, the American model, about how this uh, tropical system is uh, actually evolving. Alan? Thanks, Bob. President Trump is in Canada today for the G7 summit. He is meeting with leaders who are furious over his new trade policies. Natasha Chen explains now how tensions flared even more after President Trump brought up Russia. Before departing for Quebec on Friday for the G7 summit, President Trump made a controversial suggestion. You know, whether you like it or not, and it may not be politically correct, but we have a world to run. And in the G7, which used to be the G8, they threw Russia out. They should let Russia come back in. So far, the only other foreign leader who agrees is the new prime minister of Italy. Russia was kicked out of the talks after its illegal annexation of Crimea in 2014. Casting a bigger cloud over the G7 summit will be Trump's new tariffs, which have led to bitter backlash from leaders like Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. These tariffs are an affront to the long-standing security partnership between Canada and the United States, and in particular, an affront to the thousands of Canadians who have fought and died alongside their American brothers in arms. Trump tweeted on Thursday saying Trudeau doesn't bring up the fact that they charge us up to 300 percent on dairy, hurting our farmers, killing our agriculture. Also on Thursday, French President Emmanuel Macron had said the leaders would not rule out a 6-1 agreement, as opposed to the traditional document signed by all seven parties outlining their shared goals. Unraveling the fabric of our trade relations, not respecting the rules of the World Trade Organization, is bad for everyone. President Trump will only be attending one day of the conference, skipping meetings on climate change. Instead, he'll head to Singapore ahead of the highly anticipated summit with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. I'm Natasha Chen reporting. Coming up, the master strategist and the brains of the Sarasota Democratic Party, the money man of the Manatee Republican Party, and one of the best-known radio talk show hosts in the entire Tampa Bay area, next at the Trapeze. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. 
My credit score was not that great. I didn't understand what went into my credit score. It was overwhelming. Do you want to attain better credit health but don't know where to start? Credit Sesame can help by providing you a free credit score. I love the app. It's so easy to use. It's like having a, your own financial coach. Credit Sesame broke my credit score down into things that I understood, and it made me think, I can do this. And the awesome thing about Credit Sesame, it's free. It's 100% free. You don't need to go it alone. Get started today at CreditSesame.com. Did you know you could get life insurance for less than 32 cents a day? With guaranteed acceptance, whole life insurance through True Stage, you can get up to $25,000 in protection with a single phone call. True Stage can help free your family from immediate financial stress when you're gone. Utility bills, mortgages, car payments, those are a lot of things that can add up pretty fast. And even if you're on a fixed income, prices fit your budget, starting at less than 32 cents a day. Plus, your price will never increase and your benefit will never decrease. And with no medical tests or health questions, you cannot be turned down for any reason. Call 1-800-842-7189. Now, for a free, no-obligation quote, True Stage offers plans to fit your budget. Help protect your family from immediate financial burdens after you're gone with guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance through True Stage. Call 1 800 842 7189 now. Hi, I'm Chef Bob. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday morning on ABC7, where we'll be serving up the most awesome dishes. Then stop by your neighborhood Publix, pick up the recipe card, and all the ingredients. Get all the local information you need before you leave home in the morning. Watch Good Morning Sun Coast weekdays on ABC7 to get breaking news, plus first alert, weather and traffic focused on where you live. ABC7, we're here for you. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, Contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. Welcome back. President Trump is playing three-dimensional chess, you say. Okay. This week he announced tariffs against our fiercest rivals, Canada, Mexico, Great Britain, Germany, and France. Meanwhile, the president is making the case for Russia to rejoin the G7. You might remember they were kicked out after invading Crimea. And there is the matter, or no matter, apparently, of Russia interfering in the 2016 presidential election. Friends, enemies, rivals, what's in the name? After the G7, Trump is off to Singapore to meet with North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un. No sweat. The president says he didn't need much prep. Joining us for more are Kevin Griffith of the Sarasota Democratic Party, Ken Piper, the treasurer of the Manatee Republican Party, and Dan Maduri of AMA 20 Florida Live in Tampa. And Dan, uh, let me start with you. You know how the whole thing looks with the G7 and Russia and the tariffs against mm -hmm. France. What's your take? Well, I mean, we're dealing with the simply does not care about anything regarding the optics, especially not in the traditional sense. I mean, here you have President Trump, who, honest to God, had the Russian uh, delegation inside the White House a day after the Mueller investigation was launched, a day after all of the bombshells with Russia were being dropped. So he doesn't care about traditional optics. He's going to do whatever it is he feels like he's going to do. And it's up to the president to decide what is his foreign policy package going to be president it's foreign policy it's it's completely absolute so he has a right to make these decisions he has right to make these calls and frankly he doesn't care about political fallout kevin your take well um you know it's important to remember russia was removed from the g7 one because they invaded crimea but two because they shot down a commercial airline i believe it was mh17 it just seems to me that for some reason president trump likes to appease russia more than backing the people of america and the question is, what is his goal? I mean, what is the purpose for this? I don't, I don't know. Ken, earlier this week, the president accused uh, Canada of burning down the White House in 812, which of, of course, 1812, which of course was not true. It was the British. Do you make sense of any of this? Well, I think uh, the one thing that I do make sense of is the fact that uh, uh, President Trump may be headed in the right direction when he's saying that. Uh, this is being done for national security reasons. Let's not forget about uh, uh, Uranium One. Was a Canadian oh, oh, company. Oh, hold, hold on one second. I mean, Canada has sent men and women into battle on our behalf after 9/11, and they remain 
fighting on our behalf in Afghanistan today, how could you say that whatever Canada does is a national security threat? I think when you, you can speak of Canada as a military ally on the one hand, and perhaps not necessarily strictly aligned with us economically on the other hand. And I think the same thing applies to Mexico. They are not exactly our friends when uh, we have thousands of people uh, pouring across the borders. That is not in the interest of the security of the United States. I keep on remembering that song from the cartoon show, Blame Canada. You know, it's, it's un inexplicable when we look at Canada and, and can Canada and Mexico now being our adversaries. These are our allies and trade is important. It benefits us all. It makes our products cheaper. It gives, helps us with our employment. It's, I just don't understand what his goal is here. Okay, our conversation continues right after we get a check on the first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Bob. Well, Alan, I'll tell you what, we are looking at a nice weekend ahead and uh, some storms are possible along the Seabreeze front in the afternoon, but uh, won't be many at all. Uh, key, uh, the uh, Casey Key webcam showing pretty nice conditions out there out on the waters today. Beautiful. Here comes a line that tried to bring us some rainfall. Didn't do much. A few showers up near Anna Marie Island and also uh, near Cortez. That line moved through relatively unnoticed. What's uh, not going unnoticed is the red tide and we had the latest report come out at three o'clock this afternoon from the FWC and indications are 33 stations now reporting uh, some low to uh, moderate concentrations of red tide. Uh, with the heaviest concentrations now from Venice southward. Uh, it had been in Inglewood earlier, so it is moving, and uh, it's high enough right now to uh, create some fish kills. There have been some reported fish kills uh, near Inglewood as well as near the jetties. Uh, again, a 33 samples showing background to medium concentrations. We also have some reports there near Siesta Key with some irritation being reported all the way up to a new pass. And then uh, just a few ISID ones or five counts uh, reported into Manatee County area beaches. It's not terrible, but it is there. And uh, you are urged to go to FWC and fill out your own report if you do detect some of that in some of the beaches. And I imagine a lot of people will be heading out to the beaches this weekend. Uh, and it looks as though the heavy storms continue to be the focus on the east coast and into central Florida as of late. And that's due to that persistent westerly flow that we have around an area of low pressure, which continues to spin right here in the Gulf of Mexico. A little low pressure in the mid levels of the atmosphere. It brought us some rain late last night, but I don't think we'll see a repeat performance tonight. Uh, the heavier storms that were around over central Florida now shifting well off to the east coast and uh, they'll be winding down here in the next hour or so. We've had a lot of lightning strikes recently along the east coast too, but uh, here's the forecast at one o'clock in the morning. Most of the rain over, as I mentioned, and then we'll start off pretty nice uh, on Saturday morning, nine o'clock. Uh, generally uh, sunny skies anticipated. Uh, this area of low pressure will bring some showers along the uh, north north of us along the Big Bend area, uh, but we should not see that activity here as that low pressure area has kind of shifted off to the west and north. There's those isolated showers I mentioned in the afternoon. You look at the time there, it's 3, uh, 2, 2.30 in the afternoon, pushing off basically toward the east once again, and maybe a residual shower or two hanging on, but not long uh, through Saturday evening. Sunday looks to be the same with some inland showers possible on the sea breeze front, uh, pushing off toward the east coast for Mariners. Good boating weather uh, for us uh, on both Saturday and Sunday. You can see that counterclockwise swirl right there. That's the trough in the jet stream now digging all the way down into the southwestern portion of the Gulf of Mexico tonight and that will stay there too. This low is kind of cut off from the main flow. It'll be hanging there for a while uh, all the way through the weekend, but should not be a big player in our weather as high pressure is starting to get a little bit more control of our weather. And uh, what may be uh, controlling the weather in the future next week is a tropical system that is uh, possibly going to move into the Gulf of Mexico again. Uh, some models are indicating that. In fact, the GFS, this is the latest run now, just came out. And one thing to note is it's shifted a little bit more to the west, uh, away from Florida on this latest run, which I said just came out. It does show it, though, becoming a tropical storm, a possible hurricane as we move through time next week. So in seven days from now, if this verifies, we could be dealing with barrel out there in the western portion in the central portion of the Gulf of Mexico. As far as our forecast is concerned for us, we're looking pretty good. Boating, I mentioned, looking good tomorrow. The east winds turn to the west at 10 knots, and then we'll start off really nice in the morning with low temperatures down to the low 70s. Slight chance for showers on Saturday, and a little bit better on Sunday, but that'll be inland. And then high temperatures will warm into the upper 80s, which is close to seasonal averages for this time of year. 40% chance comes back to play on Monday and Tuesday. Al will be back with his guests right after this. 
Florida Studio Theater presents Always Patsy Cline, now held over due to popular demand. A tuneful and memorable tribute, Patsy Cline's rise to legendary stardom is told through the eyes of her biggest fan. Featuring such hit songs as Walkin' After Midnight, I Fall to Pieces, Crazy, and many more you know and love. Critics are calling Always Patsy Cline warm and genuine and engaging. Audiences calling it outstanding. Always Patsy Klein is now playing. Tickets can be purchased by calling 941-366-9000 or by visiting floridastudiotheater.org. I'll be right back. Hi. You think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home, just in case. If you're probably sober, then why would you do that? Good choice. Probably okay isn't okay. If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. That's a full glass of wine. I'll be chatting you later. What to expect when you're expecting a teenager. Today we're talking about how to wake up your teen, and this works literally every time. Good kisses. Good kisses. I know, I heard, I heard. It wasn't you. It was the... Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more than 100 years, American Humane Association has been teaching kids to be kind to animals. Those in our homes, on the farms, on the silver screen, and wildlife conservation caring for the world's vanishing creatures. But we can't do it alone. Visit kindness100.org to find ways to teach kids how they can make a more caring, compassionate, and humane world for all of us. Hurricane season is here, and so is the official Suncoast Hurricane Guide from ABC7. This essential resource arms you with vital information you need to protect your family and property when severe weather threatens the Suncoast, including how to create your readiness plan and survival kit, shelter locations, what to do with pets, and important phone numbers. Visit mysuncoast.com and download the official Suncoast Hurricane Guide from ABC7. Brought to you by Batteries Plus, the Florida Lottery, and Sarasota Glass and Mirror. They are the greatest fighting force the world has ever seen. But what does it take to bridge the distance and keep them connected to family, home, and country? What does it take to strengthen our service members so they can be the greatest force for good in the world? It takes a force. Be a force behind the forces. Give today at force.uso.org. Welcome back. We are talking about the week in Washington and politics. And joining us for more are Kevin Griffith of the Sarasota Democratic Party, Ken Piper, the treasurer of the Manatee Republican Party, and Dan Maduri of AMA20 Florida Live in Tampa. And Dan, let me start with you. Uh, this is what the president said as he was leaving the White House today en route to Canada. Whether you like it or not, and it may not be politically correct, but we have a world to run. And in the G7, which used to be the G8, they threw Russia out. They should let Russia come back in. You know, Dan, I, I would imagine that makes a lot of sense from that perspective. On the other hand, one analyst said today, one of Russia's principal foreign policy goals for decades has been to split the United States from its allies, whether by accident or by design. President Trump appears intent on bringing that dream to fruition. Your reaction? Um, well, my reaction? Quite simple. I do think that um, he wants Russia to be back. I think that he truly does believe that there is no there there. That's an exact tweet, uh, text message that one of uh, Robert Mueller's right hand man in the investigation did in fact send to his lover. He believes there's no there there. He's feeling more emboldened the more this investigation carries out. He thinks that it's going to be over before the midterms. If nothing is found before the midterms, that's going to be a major coup for the Republican Party. And he wants Russia to be at the table because. He believes that everyone should, in fact, have a voice. He said he's going to meet with anyone. He's meet with Kim Jong-un. I mean, we've seen presidents do this kind of thing in the past, just not to this type of uh, degree of scrutiny. Kevin, fair enough. Whatever you think about collusion, about the investigation leading to collusion, every U.S. intelligence agency, everyone that's investigated this has said that Russia meddled in the 2016 election. And they also say they want to meddle in this upcoming midterm elections. 
and our president wants to bring them into the fold, not make them a pariah state. This is a big problem when the top of our country, the leader of our country, is embracing a foreign entity that is trying to meddle with our democracy. Ken, I can't tell you how many times I've heard the president say, no collusion. I've heard a lot of Republicans say, no collusion, show me the evidence. But as you know, prosecutors don't tell the public what their evidence is in the criminal investigation until and unless they file criminal charges. And what has taken them a year and a half to get to that Watergate point? Watergate took two years. Uh, not, I don't think for charges to, to be filed. We still ha well, do not have... We've had over a dozen criminal charges being filed Well, already. we do not have one charge filed that would indicate there was any collusion between the, between the president and his campaign and Russia. We have no evidence whatsoever of that. And, you know, interestingly enough, uh, this case is being tried in the press. It really isn't being tried in the court where it belongs. Well, I mean, hold on one second. I mean, has the special counsel said anything in the press? Has he leaked anything that you're aware of? Oh, no, no, he doesn't leak it. He gives it to the New York Times to leak. That, are you saying Special Counsel Mueller gives it to the New York Times? Uh, apparently, someone in his office is giving... Uh, I've never heard that before. Um, I've never heard a Republican or a Democrat claim before that, um, that the Mueller investigation has, has uh, leaked anything. Let me just get one more thing in here. Congressman Tom Rooney, who represents this area now, says, quote, what is the point of saying that there was a spy in the campaign when there was none? You know what I'm saying? It's like create this thing to tweet about knowing it's not true. This is a conservative Republican who represents our area. Yes. Well, you know, when, whenever anybody mentions anything about spies, um, I, think, I think of the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution, which I have right here that says all of us are to be secure in our homes and in our papers. Now, now so, hold, someone... Hold on, one second. So, someone hey, hold, hold on just one second. I don't know what that quite means, but I do know we have to take a break. We're just getting warmed up, and we'll be back right after this. If you think it's hot outside, just wait until you see even hotter savings inside. Only at Rugs as Art Hot Summer Savings Sale Event will you find the lowest prices on a vast selection of stunning rugs, furniture accents, and accessories. This special event only happens once a year, so hurry in before the best selections are gone. The Hot Summer Savings Event ends soon, so don't miss out on the best prices ever. Rugs as Art, Sarasota's only area rug superstore. I heard about the Detoli Cancer Center through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. And that helped precisely identify where my cancer was and some additional cancers that were not found during the biopsy. I would recommend the Detoli Cancer Center. As a group of human beings, they are unbelievably great. My credit score was not that great. I didn't understand what went into my credit score. It was overwhelming. Do you want to attain better credit health but don't know where to start? Credit Sesame can help by providing you a free credit score. I love the app. It's so easy to use. It's like having a, your own financial coach. Credit Sesame broke my credit score down into things that I understood and it made me think, I can do this. And the awesome thing about Credit Sesame, it's free. It's 100% free. You don't need to go it alone. Get started today at CreditSesame.com. WWSB ABC7 is an equal opportunity employer, and we're looking for qualified people to join our dynamic team. For a list of current openings and to apply online, visit www.mysuncoast.com slash contact slash employment. If you're a motivated team player and you want a rewarding career in a fun, fast-paced working environment, WWSB ABC7 could be the perfect fit for you. Check out our list of openings now. Once you get atrial fibrillation, you need to have a very close relationship with your primary doctor. Prevention is the whole ball game here, because once you have a stroke, you can't undo it. A year without stroke is a year that you can enjoy doing the things that you've worked all your life to finally get to do. You took care of yourself. You did what is necessary for you to be around one more year. And then next year, we'll celebrate one more year without a stroke. I'm Deshauna Barber. 
In 2016, I was proud to win the title of Miss USA. What makes me just as proud is my service in the U.S. military. In the service, a soldier gains skills and learns values like discipline and leadership. That makes them an asset to any business that hires them. If you're an employer, on behalf of Coalition to Salute America's Heroes, remember to hire smart and bet on a vet. Visit saluteheroes.org or call this number to learn more. Everyone's buzzing about Suncoast View. I like watching the Suncoast View. I like the Suncoast View. The cooking segments, I love the recipes. The theater segments are terrific. Join Stephanie Roberts, Linda Carson, and special guests on Suncoast View for hot topics, everyday issues, celebrities, food, fashion, fitness, and everything in between. Nothing is off limits. They're just fun. For smart, fun talk in the afternoon, watch Suncoast View, weekdays at 4 on ABC7. Welcome back. We are talking about the week in politics and joining us for more are Kevin Griffith of the Sarasota Democratic Party, Ken Piper, the treasurer of the Manatee Republican Party, and Dan Maduri of AM820 Florida Live in Tampa. And Ken, let me start with you. After uh, the, the president may be uh, leaving uh, Canada um, after day one of the G7 summit because He's not too happy to be there in the first place, but he's heading to, to a historic summit in uh, Singapore with North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un. He did say that he really did not find much need to prep for this in a way he's been prepping for his entire life, which does have a lot of people, you know, concerned about this is really complicated stuff and nothing is on the line except for possible nuclear war. And I can think of no person, no better person to be conducting complicated negotiations than the great negotiator himself, Donald Trump. There's many issues that are involved here. Everybody's focusing on North Korea. North Korea isn't the real object. It most certainly isn't the sole object. China is uh, using North Korea as its pawn. China is interested in controlling the South China Sea, the East China Sea, and the Sea of Japan. They've set up uh, nuclear bases in these uh, um, islands that they've created in the South China Sea. It's specifically so that they have all the nuclear weapons and no one else does. North Korea says they don't mind denuclearizing the, uh, the peninsula. It's not North Korea that's denuclearizing, it's China that's denuclearizing. Kevin, it seems like complicated stuff to me. I do worry about Trump's deal-making ability. Ask the people of Atlantic City about his deal-making ability. But I will say uh, I'm an American first before I'm a Democrat and I do want peace and I do hope for the success of uh, the negotiations and I you know whether it's Donald Trump or some other president if they're able to bring pre peace to that region uh, and the people of North Korea through no fault of their own seem to be living in abject poverty then uh, you know all the better but I do worry about Trump uh, wanting to get a deal and being able to go out there and shake hands and have the photo op more than the details and concentrating on what the actual deal is. And remember, this is the same guy who said when and President Obama was able to strike a deal with Iran, well, it was a bad deal. Well, no, for 10 years, they weren't allowed to develop nuclear weapons. That's a pretty good deal. Dan, I'm going to switch topics on you. We're going to talk about Scott Pruitt, the EPA administrator. Uh, a lot of folks on, on your side of the aisle lo love talking about draining the swamp, but uh, the EPA administrator has had a little bit of a week uh, in fact, mm -hmm. he's had a lot of little bits of a week. This is what the president had to say today. Scott Pruitt is doing a great job within the walls of the EPA. I mean, we're setting records. Uh, outside, he's being attacked very viciously by the press. And I'm not saying that he's blameless, but we'll see what happens. So just this week, he's sending his, um, his security detail out to find special lotion for him. That's after <laughs> sending folks out to try to buy used mattresses from the Trump Hotel. That's after staying in the apartment belonging to a lobbyist. Uh, and don't forget the, uh, the booth of secrecy in the uh, EPA office. Why does this man still have a job? Well, I think it's interesting. I do think that uh, Pruitt charges now or allegations, they're up to 12. I was hoping for one more to get that Baker's Dozen number in there. Uh, the booth of secrecy doesn't really concern me. That is kind of a thing. On Capitol Hill, a lot of people do, in fact, have that and do, in fact, uh, use that and implement that in their day-to-day -day practice. But where are these where are these uh, uh, um, uh, types of uh, ideas learned by a Scott Pruitt? I mean, you have to remember, here's a guy from Oklahoma 
who basically was the attorney general, then had uh, um, just basically Oklahoma state seats. Why does he get this such entitlement surrounding him? I mean, this is something I don't understand. A uh, uh, Treasury Secretary Mnuchin, I get it. I mean, he has a hundred, two hundred, three hundred million dollars in the bank. He wants to fly private. You understand that he doesn't want to change his lifestyle in order to work in the government. You kind of understand that, but a Pruitt, I don't get this at all. So, Dan, what, what, are you saying that he should be out? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think that there has been a string of mild corruptions throughout the uh, Trump cabinet, all the way from mild to being egregious. And I think that sooner or later, it's almost uh, they, they, they pile on top of each other till it's just like enough with these things. But as far as the president's concerned, I think that he is in such an embattled position that he views people who are his people, that he doesn't care what they do because he thinks everything's holistically unfair and nothing's absolutely true. And so therefore, screw everyone else. That's my guy. He, he deserves a great, uh, great pat on the back. Ken? Okay. Um, I think Pruitt is trying to work himself out of the job, and I hope he works himself out of a job very quickly by shutting down the EPA. Um, clearly, the EPA has basically been working itself out of a job for a couple of decades now. Uh, because uh, they, ha they have a law that states that if the states have more restrictive laws than what the federal does, that the EPA, federal EPA will back out and permit the state uh, 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 agencies to take over. Kevin? The Democratic Party st stands for environmental protection. It's a, a key component of our community here locally with the beaches, and it's, of course, a very important issue. It isn't, I think if you look at Scott Pruitt, he was the Oklahoma Attorney General. When he comes to Washington, he brings his staff with him. He gets those staffers raises, five-figure five raises. Uh, then he, he has a lobbyist who he rents an well, apartment well, Kevin, from. Uh, and now he's a good old boy the, where he the, has the them the walk Obama's, his dog the and pick up his... set the standard here. Uh, let's look at Michelle Obama's friends who were paid hundreds of millions of dollars for setting up the um, internet for, uh, for Obamacare. And there was nothing wrong with that. But Pruitt comes along and I've he never, wants his I've own staff. I've never heard of that before. We live in a world now where you can just say whatever you want and that's news. Right. If you're if you're a Democrat, you can say whatever you want and it's the truth. And it's not. What does that have to do with Mr. Pruitt, you know, having AIDS pick up his dry cleaning. As I said, the, the Obamas set the standard. So a Republican comes in and wants to pay an aide $100 for picking up his laundry, but, but Michelle Obama can pay hundreds of million dollars to her friends to set it, setting up the internet for Obamacare. Okay. But, the, let's fact the check. Democrats have set the have set the standard. Alan, let's fact check. Okay. That's not true, and the, the Pruitt issue is true because those staffers have now left the office I, and testified I, that I, they I, did so. I want to start on one uh, fairly local issue involving the governor's race and and the news that came out today uh, with Adam Putnam, who is the the Republican Commissioner of Agriculture and Consumer Services the front runner for the Republican gubernatorial nomination. He is also in charge, his office, of doing background checks for those who are applying for concealed carry permits in Florida. And it turns out that for the last year, no one was actually doing those background checks um, because somebody who works there couldn't log on to the federal system for doing so. Dan, what was your reaction to that? Uh, my reaction, uh, this is to Adam Putnam. Here's an individual who is a central trust fund baby, the person who was elected to Florida House at 22 years old. He literally has a cat named after his family in Putnam County, and his time as Agriculture Commission has been a disaster. I mean, the citrus industry is down 80 percent, 80 percent since Putnam has been Ag Commish. We're going to have to take the orange off our license plates. I don't know what we're going to put on there. Maybe a gun. Dan, that is, well, you, you digress there to, to other issues, but uh, former Congressman David Jolly, the Republican from Pinellas County, tweeted today, wow, this is the type of a story that could legitimately end a campaign. Uh, Ken, in the very least, I mean, it shows a measure of incompetence in, in, at the Agriculture Department that you were not doing background checks on those who are applying for concealed carry permits. What could be more dangerous? What this shows is more media hysteria, and they've got the facts wrong. The fact of the matter is it was non-criminal background checks that, that the employee 
did not follow through on allegedly because he could not log in. The criminal background checks, there were two separate systems that were used to check them. A beat was never missed on those. So, can, can, they were supposed to log on to the federal system for doing background checks and that was not done. And the employee was fired as soon as, he, as, soon as the office found out. Um, all of the applications were reviewed and so are you able to point out to me one application, one non-criminal application that got through that resulted in harm to anyone? That's the point. We don't know. Here's the, here's the facts. So Adam, Kevin, I'm going to let you finish okay. that, but we do have to take a quick break and we'll be back in a moment. The following message is brought to you by Mesobook.com. People who have been diagnosed with mesothelioma have many questions. How did I get this disease? What are my treatment options? How will this affect my loved ones? You need answers, which is why we offer a free book written by medical professionals who have treated mesothelioma. Call toll-free at 1-800-777-1366 or go to mesobook.com. Maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made her college years happen. Watch out. Opening that education savings account when she was little. Spearheading a campus tour. And another, and another, and another, and another. Bam! Deciphering financial aid. She was like, what? But now she's like, yeah! you waste planning for college. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He really likes to be around people. And as soon as I start to make my breakfast, Hamilton is right there. I get out my mat and I'm doing a downward dog and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. I mean, look at this little face. How could you not love him? My name is Blake. I received a heart transplant when I was two weeks old. I play defense for the Red Hot Tornadoes. Sometimes my heart starts pounding like faster and faster as I go. I know I have someone else's heart inside me. It makes me feel happy because someone was generous enough to give me a second chance to live. This gift of life was made possible by an organ donor. Imagine what you could make possible. Sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov. Everybody can make something because I think everyone has a spark of creativity and the reason that I have to keep making is because I don't think my life would be as fulfilling without it. If you make things yourself, that means you're not cowering in fear. You're out there taking chances. That, I think, is my way of saying I love you to the world. All right, now I want to hear why you make. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. And our guests join us right now for final thoughts. And Ken was just talking about how the whole thing with Adam Putnam and the Department of Agriculture that was supposed to do background checks on concealed carry permits, apparently it's not been done for over a year. They seem to have lost the federal log on. Kevin, what was your reaction? Well, the biggest issue was that in 2016, Adam Putnam held a press conference touting the record number of concealed carry permits that were issued that year. That was the same year that the Pulse nightclub uh, massacre happened where 40 were killed in Orlando. That person did have a concealed carry permit. Of course, we have Parkland now. It's just, for me, it's incompetence. And that's what happens when you have one party rule. We have one party rule right now in Tallahassee. There's no checks and balances. We have one party rule here in the county. The Democrats are simply asking the voters, give us a chance. Okay, we wanted to get to one other subject that's been on a lot of people's minds, and that is the NFL, the president uh, this week, disinviting the Super Bowl champion uh, Philadelphia Eagles to the White House uh, because a number of them, a lot of them, 
w didn't want to show up. Um, Dan, um, I know you have your finger on the, on the sports world. I was won wondering what your reaction is, including to the fact that to emphasize the story, uh, the Fox News Channel used video of the Eagles kneeling, but it was in prayer way before the national anthem. It had nothing to do with it. Some might argue that would, that would be fake news. Yeah, no, I, I think I think it just highlights the media's uh, um, sometimes it's it's lack of uh, research into a photo, just like the immigrants in cages that they allege took place under the Trump administration. Um, and secondly, um, Ronald Reagan started sports teams going to the White House, a Republican president. Donald Trump, hopefully he ends sports teams going to the White House, a Republican president. I just don't think there's any room for them to be there. It's a place of policy. It's a place to be serious. You only get four years, eight years if you're lucky. And frankly, I hope that they spend all that time actually doing work, policy, foreign policy, economic development, immigration, things of that nature. I don't think that there needs to be celebrities uh, walking through the hallways and skateboarding through it like Tony Hawk did. Fair enough. Kevin, uh, Ken, I'm sorry, your reaction? Haven't watched an NFL game since October of 2016. I don't ever intend to do it again. Um, but this is just great strategy on Trump's part. He lets the media follow something like uh, a, a sports team not coming to the White House. And in the meantime, he's out here doing the good business of the uh, public. You get a quick last Well, word. I do agree with Ken on the sleight of hand with the uh, media following this story. But I will say that I do feel sorry for a local uh, Republican state committee man who was an Eagles fan who had planned to attend that that ceremony. I think his name is Christian Ziegler. And I'm, I'm sure he's a little bit torn now with his president and what happened. All right, thanks I a lot. I would Christian's torn. Thanks a lot, everyone. Before we go, we want to share with you what some of you had to say about last night's show on sports gambling. A few months ago, the Supreme Court ruled banning sports gambling was unconstitutional. Florida hasn't made a decision yet. The voters will decide in November when it's put on the ballot. We went to Facebook for your thoughts. And Robin says, I don't care about the pros and cons. I just don't think it's the government's business if someone adult wants to gamble. And Donna says, hmm, Florida lottery, gambling, racing innocent greyhounds, it, gambling. Is there a difference? Am I missing something? Well, if you join the conversation on tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash mysuncoast.com.abc7.nfyi. FYI, you can watch past discussions on demand. They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. We want to thank all our guests for being here tonight. Kevin Griffith is with the Sarasota Democratic Party. Ken Piper is the treasurer of the Manatee Republican Party. And Dan Maduri is with 820 Florida Live in Tampa. When we return, we'll have a final look at your first alert weather. Plus, we remember... Anthony Bourdain. So stay with us. Your primetime headlines are coming up in a moment, but right now let's get a final check on our first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Bob. Yeah, we'll go ahead and take it right now, Alan. We are looking at uh, the Lakewood Ranch webcam showing a few fair weather cumulus clouds around right now, dancing across the sky. And then we had the higher variety clouds blow off from some of the bigger storms that were inland today. Uh, that activity is winding down. Skies are generally fair up and down the coast and no real threat of any rainfall this evening. Uh, all is for the most part over the east coast and it has been strong. There have been numerous weather warnings for those cells, but this upper level low continues to generate some showers every once in a while out there in the Gulf of Mexico. Go. Nothing like we saw last night at this time. So this is going to be a player a little bit tomorrow morning, mainly to the north of us as far as rain goes to start things off. But uh, no rain around all this down south. False returns there. The heavier rain, though, re legitimate from Orlando, stretching all the way over to Melbourne and then up toward Titusville. Uh, the future cast showing that low spinning close to us. And once in a while, some energy may be rotating close to us. This is at 6 a.m. now, and you can see we'll start off with partly cloudy skies. That rain kind of hanging off into the Gulf with a little bit better chance for that shower activity along uh, just north of Pinellas County and Hillsborough County. Uh, look and see, that'll be, I think, the, the key player there as far as any rainfall goes along the West Coast will be that little upper-level low spinning there. Uh, but for us, it should be a decent weekend. Lots of sunshine and 
Uh, temperatures warming into the upper 80s to near 90 degrees in the afternoon. And then this persistent trough of low pressure digging all the way down into Central America. And this is the area that we'll keep an eye on very closely next week for the potential of a tropical system developing. The good news for us here on the West Coast is that the models now, at least a couple of them have been shifting everything a little bit further off to the west uh, toward Texas and Louisiana late next week. And that's not even 100% going to happen for 100% uh, chance of that happening. 84 right now in Sarasota. It's 73, though. It's cool in Orlando and temperatures you missed them there quickly here into the uh, upper upper 70s to low 80s right near the coast 84 degrees we have some sunshine out there the humidity is nice 55 percent we have a wind out of the north northeast at eight some of that rain cooled air making its way all the way to the west coast of florida now and that's keep, keeping things pretty comfortable out there tomorrow's forecast calling for high temperatures to warm into the upper 80s uh, and beaches right around 86 degrees for highs and then we'll see uh, just a 20% chance for a passing shower or two. Most of that action will be inland uh, later on in the day, and that won't be much here. Temperatures around the U.S., uh, it's been kind of a cool couple of days there. Places like Detroit and Toronto, as well as in Cleveland, 70s there. 96, though, the high tomorrow in Dallas, Texas, 94 in Kansas City. For boaters tomorrow, winds will be out of the east to start the day, turning to the west later on. Seas running 1 to 2 feet with a light shot. 7-day forecast, slight chance for shower. On Saturday, maybe a coastal shower or two in the morning, but most of it in the inland areas, there won't be much. And then a 40% chance comes Monday and Tuesday. And then we'll be keeping an eye on the tropics. We brought the rain chances down on Thursday and Friday of next week. Alan will be back with primetime headlines right after this. My credit score was not that great. I didn't understand what went into my credit score. It was overwhelming. Do you want to attain better credit health but don't know where to start? Credit Sesame can help by providing you a free credit score. I love the app. It's so easy to use. It's like having a, your own financial coach. Credit Sesame broke my credit score down into things that I understood and it made me think, I can do this. And the awesome thing about Credit Sesame, it's free. It's 100% free. You don't need to go it alone. Get started today at CreditSesame.com. Hi, I'm Chef Bob. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday morning on ABC7, where we'll be serving up the most awesome dishes. Then stop by your neighborhood Publix, pick up the recipe card, and all the ingredients. Mark Zupan, part of the U.S. Paralympic rugby team. In my game, movement is everything. I get frustrated when my move is blocked, especially when that guy has no right to be there, even just for a minute. I love a challenge, but I don't like to play this game every day. A message from the United Spinal Association. I just need a second. Is your weight holding you back and affecting your health? Did you see this? Hmm? Your cousin had a heart attack. Really? Excess weight or obesity can be serious, but you can do something about it. Visit yourweightmatters.org. Download the free toolkit to prepare you to speak with a healthcare provider. Your weight does matter. Accept the challenge and take charge today. Visit yourweightmatters.org. At Boys and Girls Clubs, it's not just about trying new things. Tanya, come here. Learning the right steps. Two, three, four. Or making contact. It's not just about exploring the future. It's about helping them build it. It's about making the connection. It's about proving every kid and teen who enters our doors has what it takes. Great futures start here. Every time you purchase a fishing license or register your boat, you're helping to preserve our nation's coastlines, lakes, rivers, and streams, protecting memories for generations to come. Learn how your participation in boating and fishing can help the environment at takemefishing.org slash conservation. Here's today's job of the day. ABC7 is seeking a digital content manager to join our newsroom leadership team. CMS experience required. Visit mysuncoast.com slash job of the day to apply. Checking primetime headlines, beloved chef, author, and storyteller Anthony Bourdain has died. The creative mind behind CNN's Parts Unknown was in France filming an upcoming episode 
When he took his own life, CNN's Alex Markward looks back on Bourdain's incredible journey here on Earth. To me, one of life's great joys is cheese. For Anthony Bourdain, the recipe for understanding people, understanding cultures around the world, and creating a hit TV show couldn't be more straightforward. We ask very simple questions. What, what makes you happy? What do you eat? What do you like to cook? And everywhere in the world we go and ask these very simple questions, uh, we tend to get some really astonishing answers. Bourdain was found dead Friday morning by a friend in a hotel room in France, where he was filming for his award-winning CNN show, Parts Unknown. The cause of his death was suicide. Bourdain started working in kitchens at a young age and would become a celebrity chef and author as he made his way into television. The Smithsonian called him the original rock star of the culinary world, the Elvis of bad boy chefs. It was his way with words, his irreverence, curiosity, ease, and warmth that fueled his massive following. Bourdain didn't shy away from talking about past demons, heavy drug use that included an addiction to heroin as well as cocaine use. So bad, he said, he should have died in his 20s, but instead lived what he called a charmed life. Massachusetts is white, small-town America. He addressed his past head-on while highlighting the opioid epidemic in Massachusetts in an episode of his show. But I thought I'd start the show by returning to Provincetown, all the way out on the tip of uh, Cape Cod, which is where, um, at age 17, I started washing dishes and started working in the restaurant business and as a summer job, and began my sort of trajectory in a, both the restaurant business and in a drug. Somebody who wakes up in the morning and their first order of business is get heroin, uh, I know what that's like. Bourdain came to CNN in 2013, bringing his show to a global audience. Throughout his TV career, he won award after award. First order business, dinner. It was the food that lured people in, but viewers knew it was about so much more. Incredible. Quickly finding themselves immersed in an experience that focused on people, exotic places, and faiths from around the world. He insisted he wasn't a journalist, but over the years forged a unique style of storytelling that was unmatched. And that is all the time we have for this evening. I'm Alan Cohn. Thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend.